Hi, Andrew Dowdy here. Last year I was looking at online maps in Arkansas and stumbled across some really weird images of circular mounds on LIDAR. That led me to quite a bit of research, a lot more than I had planned, but I thought what I found might be of interest to others. So here's a quick look at some of my observations. For those that find this interesting, I've done a longer presentation that provides more analysis. I discovered that what I was seeing are called pimple mounds. For more than 200 years, people have been mystified over these low relief mounds found in Arkansas, Louisiana, Northeast Texas, Eastern Oklahoma, and Southern Missouri. They're not very big and not very remarkable by themselves, but there are thousands of them. In the early 1900s, there was quite a debate among scientists about the origin of these mounds, but they never reached a consensus. Today, you might see an occasional paper on the mounds, but they remain very much a mystery. What is new, just in the last few years, however, is the availability of LIDAR imagery from the U.S. Geological Survey's national map. This provides a new tool for looking at these mounds. And for those not familiar with it, the national map is an excellent resource. I put a link to it on this slide. So what does LIDAR show? This is a satellite image of an area in the Fushlafav River Valley in Arkansas. It's a typical rural area with forest and fields. If you open a map layer called Hillshade Stretch, this is the image that you'll see. This is a computer-generated image and shows what the surface would theoretically look like if illuminated by light from the upper left-hand corner of the screen. Note that this greatly exaggerates vertical relief but it allows you to see otherwise very subtle features. As you can see, LIDAR shows a number of circular mounds scattered across the various landforms in this image. Let's look closely at images in several different areas. In the two A areas, the mound features appear to be distinct, and they're also distinct in area C. In area B, they're quite faint. Switching back to the satellite imagery, you can see that the a areas with the clear mound features are forested. Area B with the faint images is a pasture. Area C is a cleared area on satellite, but it may have been previously forested. You can see some discolored splotches that correspond to the mounds in area C. This map shows the major areas of mounds I've found on the upper coastal plain and the Arkansas Valley region. I've also found mounds in the lower coastal plain and the Ozark Plateau, but will not be covering them here. As shown, most of the mound clusters are located on the margins of the major rivers, but there are also isolated clusters scattered to the Ouachita Mountains. After looking at hundreds of images, I've sorted them into 10 different typologies. The examples here will represent four of those. First, I'll provide an example at Arkadelphia, Arkansas, followed by one in Bowie County, Texas. Then I'll look at mounds at Waldron, Arkansas in the Ouachita Mountains, and finally, I will finish with a couple of examples in southeastern Arkansas. This is a map of the north side of Arkadelphia, Arkansas. The town lies on the higher ground to the south. The Washtenaw River borders it on the east. The land surface pops out pretty clearly in the stretched hillshade image. You can see some mounds clustered north of the town on what appears to be the second terrace above the river. There's also a cluster of smaller mounds to the north on the bottom land of Caney Creek. Let's take a closer look at this area. As you zoom in, the mounds show up pretty clearly. Most of these mounds are in dense forest and you can't see a thing. It is possible to see the mound located here, which is bisected by a gravel road, and this is what it looks like on the ground. The mound here lies in a yard and looks like this. From the ground, neither of these is particularly remarkable. Let's look at another example in Bowie County, Texas. This is south of the Red River, about four miles north of New Boston. The satellite imagery doesn't show a lot. The area is heavily forested. We'll take a closer look at this area, which is pasture on the southwest side and forest to the northeast. Looking at the hillshade layer, there are hundreds of mounds scattered across this flat upper ground it's a bit difficult to see them at this scale. But if we zoom in on the area in question, you can see that there are relatively faint mounds in the pasture area and better to find mounds in the forest to the east. On the ground, the forest is so thick that you can't see any of the mounds located there. 
but you can see the mounds in the cleared field. This is what they look like. It's difficult to see them in person and almost impossible to see in a photo, but the faint shadows in this pasture are the pimple mounds you see in the LIDAR imagery. Another example of mound clusters is found near Waldron, Arkansas, about 35 miles southeast of Fort Smith. There's nothing obvious on the satellite image, but when you pull up the hillshade image, you can see a number of mounds clustered on level ground, both to the west of town and in these small valleys in the center of the image. This is typical of many mound clusters found in the Washita Mountains. The significant difference here is geology. In the previous two examples, the mounds lay on Pleistocene age terrace deposits. These lie on Pennsylvania age bedrock, as do most of the mounds in the Washita's and Arkansas Valley. Yet the mounds themselves appear quite similar. Let's now move to southeastern Arkansas, where you can see another mound typology. This is Humphrey Slough on the east side of the Washita River. The area is heavily forested. The satellite imagery doesn't reveal much. If you strip away the forest, however, you get this interesting image of a number of circular mounds. These mounds lie on four distinct landforms. From left to right, the first, second, and third terraces of the river. On the far right, we move into what I refer to as the uplands, still Pleistocene, but not quite as level as the terraces. As you can see, on the first and second terraces, the mounds line up in curved patterns. These correspond to old point bars that were deposited on these terraces tens or hundreds of thousands of years ago. On the third terrace on the, in the uplands, however, the mounds appear in random patterns. This is an example of another typology, what I refer to as non-random dispersed mounds, which are found on the uplands in southeastern Arkansas and northeastern Louisiana. In this satellite image, we are looking down at the high school in the town of Hamburg, Arkansas. You can see a few dark splotches in the area on the eastern side of the image, but not much else. But when you switch to the hillshade image, you see a remarkable pattern of regularly spaced mounds across the area. Most of these are in forest, but there are a few mounds on the high school grounds here. And this is what they look like on the ground. There's really nothing remarkable. Without the LIDAR imagery, you would probably never even notice them. Another thing I discovered is that a number of these mounds are located adjacent to archeological sites. This map shows the location of a number of the better known sites located with mound clusters. And I'll show examples of five of them. I'll start with the Watson Break site in Northeastern Louisiana, then the Boone Mound site on the Washita River, the mounds at North Ozan Creek in southwestern Arkansas, the Spiro Mounds in eastern Oklahoma, and I'll finish with the area around Battle Mound on the Red River. Watson Break is an important archaeological site 10 miles south of Monroe, Louisiana. The site lies here on the west side of the Washita River under thick forest cover. The forest is so thick, in fact, that the mounds weren't even discovered until the 1980s. But LIDAR clearly shows the site, 11 mounds arranged in an oval. What makes this site so important is that archeologists have dated these mounds to 3350 BC, which makes this one of the oldest mound complexes in North America. The resolution on the LIDAR imagery here is not very good, but it still reveals pimple mounds on the terraces surrounding the site. Zooming in, you could get a somewhat clearer view of the mounds despite the poor resolution. The Boone Mounds, further up the Washita, are shown on the topo map on the east side of the river. They also show up pretty clearly on the hillshade image, even at this scale. There are a number of Pimple Mound clusters on the west side of the river, some type 1 and type 2 clusters. If you zoom in on the Boone Mounds, LIDAR also reveals some interesting features there. Within the mound group, there's a very subtle circular feature that is probably not visible from the ground. Also, I couldn't help noticing a little bump about a kilometer due east of the mounds. I have no idea what it is. The satellite imagery shows nothing but forest there. The next example is North Ozan Creek in southwest Arkansas, about 15 miles north of Hope. Mounds at this site were excavated by Harrington in 1916 and 1917. 
LIDAR imagery shows these those mounds and it also shows numerous pimple mounds on the terrace west of the site. If we zoom in on this area, you can get a clearer picture. This is what the mounds in this pasture look like. They're unremarkable in person and very difficult to capture in a photo. And here's a mound in the tree line. You can only see it because it's backlit by the sunny pasture. Spiral mounds may be the most important prehistoric site in Oklahoma, occupied from 850 to 1250 AD. It's about 10 miles west of Fort Smith on the west bank of the Arkansas, as shown by the satellite imagery. LIDAR shows some of the mounds at the park. Archaeologists have also recorded more than 20 other sites within a three-mile radius, including a number of house sites. As shown, LIDAR also reveals several clusters of pimple mounds surrounding the site, and there are other clusters scattered throughout the region. Finally, let's look at Battle Mound, which lies on the Red River 24 miles southeast of Texarkana. This mound is enormous, the largest in the Caddo area, and was occupied from 1200 to 1700 AD. As shown in the hillshade image, the mound sits on one of the lower terraces of the river, which extend almost three miles to the east at this location. You won't find mound images on these lower terraces, but there are thousands on the higher terrace to the east. You can't really see them at this scale, so let's take a closer look at this area. The stretched hillshade image here shows hundreds of mounds, some of which are isolated, and others which are tightly clustered together, particularly on the western side of the image. Within this mass of mounds, there is an interesting road-like feature. It's not clear what it is, but it's almost 200 feet wide and a meter or more deeper than the surrounding mounds. There's no evidence of this feature whatsoever on satellite imagery. The debate on the origin of the pimple mounds has been going on for more than a century, and dozens of theories have been proposed. These tend to fall into seven categories, with the mounds being formed either by erosion, burrowing animals, fluvial deposition, aeolian deposition, paraglacial or seismic activity, or by man. Two of these, paraglacial and seismic action, are not particularly applicable in this region. The basic reason that the debate has persisted so long is that no one has found a smoking gun, clear evidence of what formed these mounds. Without that smoking gun, the debate is often settled into a process of elimination, where scholars reject one theory after another before settling on the one that appears least implausible. One of the things LIDAR reveals, however, is that these researchers may have been looking at different mound typologies. It's like the parable of the blind men describing the elephant. Now LIDAR gives us a picture of the elephant, a perspective that none of the previous researchers could enjoy. So what does LIDAR tell us about these mounds? I've done a fair bit of analysis, which I covered in a longer video, but my basic conclusions are, first, LIDAR reveals a startling number of pimple mounds in this region. They can be sorted into different typologies based on the setting and patterns of clusters. Some of these typologies, I believe, were formed by erosion. But LIDAR undercuts all the other theories of natural origin that have been proposed. At the same time, it reveals many of these mounds at sites that we know were occupied by the Caddo and their ancestors. This forces us to address an interesting question. Is it possible that these mounds are anthropogenic? In other words, is it possible that hundreds of thousands of man-made mounds lie hidden under forest canopy in this region? The answer remains to be seen, of course. But if so, LIDAR would provide us with an extraordinary tool for understanding the prehistory of this part of the country. For those who are interested, I'll include a link to the longer video. Thank you for your attention.